It was not even like a week ago that the entire riot squad for the Portland Police Bureau resigned in protest. The city is not doing well. There are uh, riots and fights in the street. And Portland, of course, is desperate to generate tourism revenue. So here we get one of the weirdest and stupidest stories I've ever seen. Anything can happen. We like it that way. Portland tourism bosses are slammed for taking out full page ad in the New York Times, admitting the riot hit city has an edge, but claiming locals still love it. Perhaps. I hear a lot from many leftists who are like, the riots are basically just in like two square blocks of the city, like everything's fine. And then I hear from people who had work or business in the city and are like, I can't work here anymore. It's insane. I don't want to be here. More importantly, too, that line is a lie. Sure, the riots, for the most part, were centered around the federal courthouse, but there were numerous instances where the rioters went to residential neighborhoods. In one instance, they went to a guy's house because he had an American flag. They threatened to burn his house down unless he removed it. You mean to tell me the people there are happy with what's happening? No, it's an exodus. It's been an exodus for some time, and that's why Portland is desperate to get people to live there. But you have to be a special kind of stupid to move to a place experiencing what Portland is experiencing. Let me just uh, point something, point something out. Now, many of you may not be homeowners, okay? But I'll tell you, if you own a home in an area where they riot all the time, your property value goes down. Now, of course, for a lot of reasons, property values weirdly are going up, and it's probably more so due to big investment firms like BlackRock and other companies buying up all these properties around the country at massive markups, you know, 20 to 50 percent over market. But that means you probably couldn't move there uh, to buy a property if you wanted to. And if you did want to move there, you'd be moving into an area which would probably cause you damage to your career, to your life, to your family. It's not even about whether or not you actually think Antifa is going to show up to your house and throw a brick through the window. It's about the anxiety people feel and time less spent in the city or working towards improving it. It's a cascade effect, right? So something we saw in Detroit that uh, I'll, I'll try and keep this simple and then we'll read the story. You've got a water system. Let's say the entire water system of Detroit costs $1 million per month to operate. It's probably a lot more than that. I don't know. And you got a million people. That means every month you got to pay a dollar. That's no big deal. But then because of uh, the economic crash, because of the auto industry failure, half the people end up moving out over the span of 10 years. That means over the span of 10 years, people's water costs are doubling. Now it's $2 per month. For a lot of people that can't afford that, that means they're going to end up leaving. It's actually much more than that. I think it's in the hundreds of dollars per month. But you get my point. You can't change the cost of operating that water system. I actually spoke with some uh, advocates and and, uh, homeless project groups in Detroit who explained this. It's one of the biggest problems they face, that the the cost of supplying water to the city is going higher and higher as people keep leaving. It's a cascade effect. Now, Portland's experiencing something different. Portland's cascade effect is going to be more like as more riots rip to the city, cops are slowly going to start resigning or protesting. Crime is skyrocketing. The more crime goes up, the more property value goes down. The less people have a chance to come in or go, the city will start to crumble. Maybe they can save it. It's not necessarily a a, a death blow for the city, but you can see this is truly, truly desperation. Taking out an ad in the New York Times who are you trying to attract to your city? And why are you, you want tourists to come like to buy the, the, the voodoo donuts or whatever they're called? Pretty good, by the way. I think it's called voodoo donuts or something like that. They got good hot sauce. Now, I think Portland's pretty cool in a lot of ways, but uh, I wouldn't want to go there right now. They've got this, this great hot sauce called Secret Aardvark. Seriously, some of the best hot sauce I've ever had. No joke. Not sponsored or anything by these guys. I just was there. Put it on a burger. Wow. Sweet, spicy, amazing. And that buzzed me out. It bums me out that you got these really cool things up in Portland, but everyone's insane. And they even admitted in this ad, in this ad, let me read. Daily Mail says, Travel Portland, a nonprofit which oversees the Oregon City's tourism marketing, referenced reports of far left violence in the city in the ad. It admits that much of what has been said about Portland, whose 50 strong riot squad resigned last week, was true. And that the city, which endures nightly riots, has an edge. You've heard a lot about us lately. It's been a while since you've heard from us. Some of what you've heard about Portland is true. Some is not. 
What's most important is that we're true to ourselves. There's a river that cuts through the middle of our town. It divides. You know, what? I'll just jump to the advert. They say there's a river that cuts through the middle of our town. It divides east and west, but it's bridged over and over again, 12 times to be specific. And that's a kind of great metaphor for this city. No, it isn't. If all of those bridges just got transported into outer space by aliens and there were no more bridges, that would probably be a better explanation for what Portland is. The political violence is not going to be mended anytime soon. And there's no bridge from left to right. They say we're a place of dualities that are never polarities. Really? Two sides to the same coin that keeps landing right on its edge. Anything can happen. We like it this way. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to live in an area where people are punching each other in the streets every weekend. That's insane. Who does? Maybe they're just lying. It's like a get what go broke. They try and make these movies and these games lying to themselves, thinking this is what sells. I'll give you a really, really great example of get what go broke. I worked for a company called Fusion. You probably know about it if you watched a bunch of my videos. They wanted to be edgy like Vice. They wanted to do on the ground reporting. They had a show called Drug Wars and they were like tracking the cartels. It was their highest rated show. And one day they decided, we're going to get woke. We're going to make woke content. That's what people are going to want. And then the company went out of business. <laughs> they lost like $300 million or some insane number because nobody wanted this. You were lying to yourselves. But the marketing people came in and said, tell people this is what we're about and what we're doing. Do you think it's going to work with Portland? Hey, we know that we have ongoing riots and people are beating each other in the streets like literally four days ago. But people love it that way. Who are you trying to convince? You think regular people want to live in an area where people are beating each other with baseball bats and crowbars? Sorry, I don't think so. This is the kind of place where new ideas are welcome. No, it isn't. Antifa will throw a brick through your window if, you, if your ideas deviate. Whether they're creative, cutting edge, or curious at first glance. You can speak up here. You can be proud of you, you. You can be yourself here. No, you can't. You can be aligned with Antifa. But even if you're slightly to the right, a conservative, they will chase you down the street, shove you to the ground and full force punt your head because they did it to a guy and they scream. But he's a fascist. But they're not the regular people. You have to be a special kind of stupid to think that this is legitimate. And I'll tell you this right now. If you live in Portland and you agree with even half of what I'm saying, well, you sh I, 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 you're going to have to Explain to me why you would still be living there. Now, I know, I know. Some people can't sell their houses. Some people are stuck because of work. But for me, you know, I lived in Chicago and people are like, oh, Tim, you're you're so lucky and successful and you're in a position to do these things. Bro, I lived in Chicago. I had no money and I got on a ride share to California and was walking around with a backpack. I don't know what you expect of this grand uh, adventure they call life. But if you think it's always going to be in the comfort of an air conditioned, nice suburban home or apartment in a major city, well, you're not really living. Life is being out in the middle of nowhere and having hardship. Man, that's the other crazy thing, too. I, I like challenge. I like hardship. I like skating. You know, there's something I'm scared to do. And then when I overcome my fear and do it, it feels great. When I fall down, it feels great to get back up and try again. That challenge makes life worth living. But there are people who don't want it. And there are people who are in such desperate need of a fight, they make one up. Bro, life is full of challenges. You just go learn how to camp and do some survival stuff and, you know, just regular earth things, you know? Instead, you get these weird hybrid zealots. You get these leftists who want to live in big cities and have all their luxuries, but are desperate for some kind of fight. So they go around burning things down and beating people with crowbars. They go on to say, we have some of the loudest voices in the West Coast. And yes, passion pushes the volume all the way up. We've always been like this. We wouldn't have it any other way. We have faith in the future. We're building it every day. The only way we know how by being Portland. Come and see for yourself. Love, Portland. No, I've been there. I've seen it for myself. As I mentioned, good burgers, good hot sauce. They cut down a lot of trees, or at least they used to. And a bunch of insane people. It's a scary thing being there. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You, when, when you see, let, let me, actually, let me, let me, we'll, we'll pull this up from Pamplin Media. Riot declared as Proud Boys Antifa brawl in Portland suburb. Oregon City Police eventually separated the two groups after skirmishes broke out at Clackamas Park on Friday, June 18th. This is like four days ago. People were beating each other. This is, this is Portland Tribune. They're fighting each other. They're spraying each other. They're beating each other. Bro, that's not a fun place to be. 
You're sitting in the park having a glass of wine with your special someone. You got a little picnic table. Maybe it's like, you know, a, a red a red blanket with white polka dots and you got little sandwiches. And then all of a sudden people are screaming and beating each other and spraying each other. And then you're like, run. What a place to live. I'm in Portland during the height of a lot of this conflict. And for me, it's, it's especially because I know people recognize me. It's it's I'm, and it's been this way for like a, a 10 years for me almost. I don't know what someone's going to say, what they're going to do, what they're going to think. And I know people are insane. So for me, OK, special case. I don't want to be there. As for everyone else, you could be walking down the street with a Triumph shirt. You ever see this? There's a guy. He was wearing a Triumph shirt. This wasn't in Portland. I don't know where this was, but someone uh, thought it said Trump. This may have been in Oakland or something and beat him up because they thought Triumph said Trump. They didn't pay attention. There are stories about people wearing red hats that are like making fun of Trump. They get attacked. And someone could see you. Think about it this way. In Chicago, a guy was flying the Puerto Rican flag. He got executed. And some Democrat political action committee guy tweeted that it was a white guy with a Confederate flag. And so it was fine. Think about that. You could be walking down the street in Portland and then someone will attack you. You know why you don't want to live in these places? First of all, right now, screw the Portland and Tourism Board. Here, do me a favor. First, Become a member at TimCast.com. Help support our journalism. We got new reporters joining. Um, hopefully, we'll have like five by the next week. And we're going to have a full fun- functioning newsroom just for the launch of the new website, just before. And then we're going we're gonna to expand the newsroom quite significantly. The more people who sign up, the more journalists we're going to hire. And we're going to have them on the ground. We're going to have them undercover. We're going to ha- have them investigating. But I'll tell you this. Share this video. Let's counter the lies or the failed and pathetic attempts of that tourism board. They want to take out a massive ad in the New York Times. By all means, go ahead and do it. We're going to tell people what's really going on in Portland. Look at this. Fox News. Portland Police Union rails against defund police commissioner after riot squad resignations. Joe Ann Hardesty endorses violence instead of defending our communities communities and the business owners, the union says. They say, the head of the police union in Portland shot back against new criticism from city commissioner Joanne Hardesty, who has spearheaded the local defund police movement over the recent resignation of all 50 members of the police riot squad, arguing her self-serving agenda endorses violence instead of defending our communities and the business owners whose livelihoods were destroyed by the riots. Portland Police Association Executive Director Daryl Turner argued in a statement issued Friday that roving gangs of black clad rioters do not speak for the hundreds of thousands of residents and business owners of Portland who want a safe and clean city. Yet local politicians supported them. These rioters bent on destruction, hijacked social and racist justice. Oh, shut up. Hijacked social and racial justice movements, he continued, before calling out Hardesty directly. These rioters burned and looted our city, yet local politicians supported them. They didn't hijack anything. It was theirs from the beginning. These people have been around long before Black Lives Matter, and they will be around long after, and they're the ones flying those flags. They didn't hijack it. They use it as a shield. And you see, this is the problem. Even when you get the cops angry and challenging this, saying it's wrong, the rioters are bad. Even when you get that, they still say, but the extremists and insurrectionists have hijacked the movement. As if this wasn't their goal from the get go. As if prominent personalities in Black Lives Matter weren't advocating for Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Well, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's Black Lives Matter individuals who are rioting. It's as if the organizers weren't the ones going out there and saying, burn it all down, or the ones saying, you must respect their diversity of tactics. No, it wasn't hijacked. And you know what else I'll say about these cops? Please, thank you. Speak up. Y'all resigned from the riot squad. So what? So what? You didn't quit the department. You just been like, fine, I won't go on a riot but I still want money from you and I'll still prop up your system. To a certain degree, I can respect blue flu and, and strikes and not going on calls and saying, I'll take your money and do nothing. It's, it's your problem. But I think the most powerful thing that could happen because the regular people of the city will not step up and do anything for themselves because people have become too complacent and lazy. The police must resign firm, legit, quit. They won't do it though. Why? These cops in places like Portland, they will, they will hide behind this idea that they care about you. 
You know, I get people saying say this to me all the time. They're like, Tim, the police want to be the heroes. They're not going to quit their job in the face of adversity, even with Antifa at their back, because they know they're doing the right thing. No, maybe some. I don't buy it. Regular people will not take responsibility for themselves because these cops sit around and take responsibility for the most part for them. The cops are not getting support. And now what? Now they're not going to respond to 911 calls. That's right. That's what's been happening in many different places. North Carolina specifically, there's a story about it. The cops don't answer calls. I've spoken with some cops in a bunch of different cities who have said the same thing. We just don't respond to calls. OK, good. You know, I said, don't go to these places. There's, there's two things here. Don't go to certain neighborhoods that hate you that I get. More importantly, however, if you are choosing to stay as an officer in a corrupt city with corrupt DAs and corrupt, a corrupt justice system and a corrupt mayor and a commissioner, and you're like, I just won't go on calls. What you're really saying is, I'm not going to do the work. I'm not going to help anybody. I'm going to prop the system up and I'm going to take their money. Because if every one of these cops right now at the exact same moment quit, it would be the most insane story in the country. It would be every person in Portland at a meeting banging on the table. But Americans are too self-serving and self-interested, unfortunately. They're not willing to say no. They're not willing to say, I quit. I will not work for this. They're not willing to uh, uh, strike. There's legal ramifications to a literal strike. I mean, strike in the sense of everyone being like, we're out by, we quit. What do you think the residents of Portland would do if every single cop announced right now they were leaving the department effective immediately? They would run to town hall screaming at the top of their lungs. We saw it in Minnesota when some when, when like I think only a couple hundred uh, cops resigned. They started screaming at the city council. And then all of a sudden these woke defund the police people started advocating for funding the police. Now I get it. People say, Tim, why don't you quit YouTube? Blah, blah, blah. There's there, there's a big difference. I'm sorry. YouTube engages in censorship. It's true. I, I'll put it this way. There are some cops that are actually still trying to do the right thing. I respect that, right? But there's a certain point when one town or one city is experiencing this problem and it's corrupt beyond all recognition, you're not serving anybody if you're not answering calls and you're not, you know, you're resigning from the riot squad, but you're still taking their money and you're staying there. Now, a lot of these cops, I will say, if you're planning your exodus and you are making that move, I can respect that. I'm not expecting every cop to just jump out through the window and land on the ground with no opportunity and no chance to feed their families. No, I'm saying y'all should be preparing to move out of the city. You should be looking for other jobs. South Dakota is looking to take people on. And that's the point. I don't expect you to walk outside all at once and say, now we have no jobs and we're unemployed. For me, we're building TimCast.com. And I do not expect YouTube to last forever. That's the point. So you tell me I shouldn't be on YouTube or whatever. It's like, yeah, we're leveraging the platforms and making our way off of them. I am trying to make TimCast.com the main hub where we're going to do everything and we're going to build that up over time. It's going to be a bridge for people who come into YouTube to go somewhere else. Now, Portland's not the same thing, but there are similarities. So I can respect if you'd like to criticize me saying it's wrong. Fine. I'm, I'm, I'm open to hearing that. You can comment. But what I'm saying is cops in places like Minnesota and Portland should right now be calling other jurisdictions and moving. Minnesota, Minnesota especially, y'all should get out of that state. Oregon, move to the east and join those communities that want to secede into Idaho. If you're a cop in one of these cities, start looking for new work. That's exactly what I've been doing with TimCast.com. It's new work. I know I can't do YouTube forever. I know they're corrupt. I know it's crooked. I know all these platforms are. I stopped tweeting seriously a long time ago. Maybe I shouldn't even tweet whatever, but I don't know. It's fun to post pictures of hairless rabbits and then see people freak out. But the point is, start making the moves. We don't have to do it abruptly and overnight, although that would be effective in a lot of ways. If it's not going to happen and it can't be organized, make your exodus. So it would be great if every single YouTuber right now who was upset with the system just abruptly left. It, it's, it's just too big of a system. It's too hard to pull off. If you're a department of 50 members who just all resigned from the right squad, that is great. I think they should they should they should quit. Maybe they're already planning to. So again, I'll, I'll respect that. Resigning from the right squad was a powerful move because they all did it together. And that will have an impact. We'll see what happens with the next riots. Of course, there have been. We'll see who deals with it. But I think everybody needs to stand up and start doing something. If you work for any company and they're getting woke, start finding new work. And that's it. Let these companies get woke and go broke. Don't give them your talent. Don't give them your time. 
If Coca-Cola wants to do stupid white, white, white wokeness training, you need to file complaints against this. It is racist to tell people that certain races have inherent privileges or benefits or whatever. That is racism. Literally in the definition, file a complaint about it. The best I can say is it's not going to be easy. And Portland is a psychopathic uh, jurisdiction. But, you know, I can't necessarily blame them. They know their city's broken and they're doing everything in their power to, to, to make money. But think about how twisted it is that you would know your city is crooked and broken and you're trying to trick people into coming there. Of course, you'll hear from the leftists saying everything's fine. Yeah, everything's fine if you're walking around the city with the, uh, the Marxist fist, the red salute uh, on, your, on your vest or chest or tattooed to your neck. Yeah, Antifa will leave you alone. But if you're wearing a polo, this happened to a guy. They'll beat you up. That's the place you want to trick people into coming into. That's crooked and evil. They're trying to convince you it's a fun place to be. No, it isn't. Don't go there. I want to counter that ad with the truth that the city is in dire straits and has been for some time. And it is so horribly mismanaged by pathetic, spineless losers. It is getting worse by the minute. No propaganda effort is going to is going to convince people that this, that's, the, that's the right place to be. But they'll try. So we can counter those lies and make sure that people realize this city sucks. There used to be a lot of great things about it. There's some good things about it, but it's be, being run by insane people for insane reasons, and no one's doing anything to challenge it. I mean, granted, the Proud Boys are fighting with Antifa, but the city just, they just keep voting for these same people. So it's the city, that, it's the city they deserve, and they shouldn't uh, uh, put out these ads. You know, it's like they say, misery loves company, and that's what they want. They want you to go there and suffer too, because they want your money. Don't give it to them. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.